Mulad's New Home by Landa Ananda Love The river near Mulad's cabin grows until the water covers his floors. Mulad leaves his home and finds a cave on the hill where he decides to live. He reminds himself how it takes a little time for a seed that falls in a new place to settle down, make roots, and grow into a beautiful tree. But he still feels sad. A little tiny seed. A little tiny seed. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get down really low. We're going to be a little tiny seed. We're going to curl up as tiny as you can be. And then we're going to raise up and we're going to be a giant tree. Okay? Here we go. Get ready. Be a teeny tiny seed. Ready? Teeny tiny seed. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Be as tiny as you can. Teeny tiny. All right. We're going to grow. We're growing into a big tree. Are you ready? We're growing into a big tree. Can you grow into a big tree? Yep. Keep growing. Keep growing. Hands up to the sky. Hands up to the sky. Hands up to the sky. Can you be a big tree? Tall as you can. Tall as you can. There you go. Good job. Can you sway like a tree? Can you sway like a tree? Like that? Sway like a tree? Yeah. Good job. Great job. Mulad starts to cry, and his tears flow down to the river. Tana, the mermaid, is swimming there. She knows that her friend is feeling sad and calls to him. Mulad hears her call and walks down to meet her. Along the way, he soaks up the beauty of the valley and feels happier as he remembers that the whole valley is his home, not just one cabin or cave. Are you ready? We're going to stomp around the valley. Are you ready to stomp around the valley? Yeah? Stomp around the valley. Let's stomp really light. Can you stomp really light? Okay. How about really hard? Stomp really hard. Run around the valley. Turn around and go the other way. Stomp, 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 stomp. Good job. Tana is sitting on a rock by the river waiting for Milad. Alright. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend to be Tana sitting on the rock. Okay? We're gonna turn. We're gonna stretch out one leg. And then we're gonna stretch way up. Can you see a mermaid sitting like that on a rock? How about the other leg? Stretch your leg out. Stretch your hips way up. Tana sitting there on the rock. Did you see her waiting? He carries her back to his cave. She suggests that they paint some beautiful flowing pictures on the walls to remind Mulad of happy feelings. Tana has some magical paintbrushes, and when they start to paint, they are led by the paintbrushes around the wall in a flowing and joyful way to create wonderful, colorful pictures. Mulad does feel more joyful, but he still doesn't feel very brave and secure. Just then, their friend Mani arrives. Mani makes a beautiful fire in the middle of Mulad's cave, and they cook food in the pot for their dinner. Hey, it's time to cook some more food. All right, stretch your legs out. Got your big pot in the middle. You ready? What's in yours? Is it stew? Maybe soup? Do you like soup? I like chicken and stars. How about you? Chicken noodle, maybe? Beef stew? Mmm, that sounds delicious. Right, here we go. We're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna do it three times, okay? We've gotta stir the soup up. Two, three. 
Oh, we don't want to get that soup stuck. Let's stir it the other way. Ready? One, two, three. Good job keeping that soup from getting stuck to the bottom. Monty spends some time reminding Mulan how courageous he is and how he has always looked after all the creatures in the valley. Mulan dances around the fire and shouts, I am full of courage! I feel great! Are you ready? You're going to scream, I'm full of courage. All right, we're going to stand like this. We're going to go straight like this. Bend your knee this way. Okay? You're going to go, I'm full of courage. Okay? Ready? One, two, three. Three. I'm full of courage. I didn't hear you. Can you do it one more time? Here we go. One, two, three. I'm full of courage. Good job. I heard you that time. Mulad looks around his new home. Although he feels much happier and secure, the cave still doesn't feel like home. They hear a tweeting noise outside and notice a little robin perched in the tree outside the cave. Their hearts lift as they realize that Anna is on her way. Anna arrives and wants to make the cave feel cozy. She turns to her friend, the robin, and says, Please, would you ask your friends to help by bringing some of Mulad's things from his cabin to the cave? That will help make it cozier for him. The birds bring lots of cushions, blankets, and sheepskin rugs into the cave, and Anna helps Mulad to make the cave cozy and full of loving feelings. It feels like she has given the cave a big hug. Let's give the cave a big hug, okay? All right, so crisscross applesauce. All right, we're going to open up our arms as wide as you can. How much love can you feel in? As much love as you can feel. And then we're going to bring it in for a hug. Just squish it out. Just, just squish as much love into that cave as you can. And bring it out. Got to get some more love. Get some more love. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. And squish it in. One more time. Stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. Oh, as much love as you can. Fill it, fill it, fill it, fill the cave full of love. Good job. Fabulous. Good job, you guys. Good job. Okay, we're going to be flying birds, all right? We're going to flap. Vishud sees the birds flying to and fro from the cave and sings a beautiful song so that his blue bridge appears, linking his home in the clouds to the cave. Okay, all right, it's time to build a bridge. Are you ready? You ready? Okay. All right. I'm gonna lay down. Put your arms beside you. And then you're gonna raise your bottom up. Okay, you've got your feet on the ground, your arms on the ground. You're going to raise up your bottom. We're going to do it three times. We've got to build the bridge. We're building the bridge. Are you ready? Build the bridge. And down. Got to go up one more time. And down. And one more. Good job getting that bridge built. 
He tells Mulad how it might help him to feel at home if he talks or sings about all of the wonderful things he likes about it. As Mulad sings, the blue bridge links Mulad's new home to the old cabin, and all of the safe, secure, and cozy feelings Mulad had there to start to move across the bridge to his new home. I am the earth, I am the tree, and the roots go deep within me. I am the earth, I am the tree, and the roots go deep within me. And my branches reach to the sky, I fly, I fly. And my branches reach to the sky. I fly, I fly I feel the earth beneath my feet I feel the ground so strong I belong, I belong I feel the earth beneath my feet I feel the ground so strong I belong, I belong reach to the sky I fly I fly and my branches reach to the sky I fly I fly I feel the earth beneath my feet I feel the ground so strong I belong I belong I feel the earth beneath my feet I feel the ground so strong I belong, I belong Hey, I, hey, I, hey Hey, I, hey, I, hey Hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, ho To the sky, I fly, I fly, and my branches reach to the sky. I fly, I fly. I feel the earth beneath my feet. I feel the ground so strong. I belong, I belong. I feel the earth beneath my feet I feel the ground so strong I belong, I belong
Aja is riding on her beautiful unicorn and hears the singing. She rides over to the cave just as the sky is turning to the dark blue of the night. Mulad comes out of the cave to welcome her, and then they lie on their backs while looking up at the stars in the night sky. Aja points up and says, Mulad, look, all of the stars that shone over your cabin are also shining over your new cave. We're going to lay down. We're going to look at the sky. Look at the stars. Okay? All right. See all those beautiful stars up there? What would happen if we acted like we were making angels, like snow angels in the snow? Could we do that? Maybe sometime? Go out like that? Stretch up. One. And then breathe out. And then in. In and out. One more time. In. And now. Just look at those stars. They sure are beautiful. Up on one of the stars above their heads, Hosra sits and watches the friends looking up into the sky. Hosra's wings flap to increase the light energy. Then, Hasra beams down white light from the star until it surrounds Mulad's cave and all of the rainbow children with a beautiful, sparkly, protective bubble of white light. Mulad feels safe, secure, and happy again, and his feelings move through all the rainbow children. This makes their colors glow more brightly and the white light around them become even stronger. We're going to flap our wings like Hasra. Start out like this, as far back as we can go, and then we'll go down like this. Okay? Let's flap our wings. Ready? In, breathe in, and out. Okay, you guys, I want you to do something with me. I want you to lay down and close your eyes. I want you to take deep breaths and breathe deep into your belly. And then I want you to picture what I'm saying. Okay? Are you ready? As you breathe deeply, I would like you to feel or see a purple light around the top of your head. A deep midnight blue indigo light around your forehead. A sky blue light around your throat. A beautiful green light of love around your chest and heart. A golden sunshine yellow light around your tummy. A deep orange light around your hips and a ruby red light from the base of your spine all the way down your legs to the soles of your feet. And as the red light travels through the bottom of your feet, it grows roots connecting you to Mama Earth, holding you safe and secure as you go about your day. Take a couple of more deep breaths and then open your eyes. You're ready to go. See you next time. Okay, when you get ready, we are going to do some yoga from the Chakra Girls Yoga Cards. We're going to focus on the four that are for the root chakra. All right, there's a few things to think about. Have fun when you're feeling the movement rather than focusing on doing the pose perfectly. 
pay attention to how your body feels. If the muscles are strained or you're forcing a pose, relax and move into a more comfortable position. Experiment with keeping your eyes open or closing them in the poses to see which one you prefer whenever you're doing it. Your breathing is just as important as the movements of the pose. So pay attention to your breath and practice taking long, deep inhales and long, deep exhales. You can practice barefoot on a yoga mat in the grass, on the beach, anywhere with a non-slippery surface. Most important is be safe. If something hurts or you're unsure of how to do a pose safely, talk to a trusted big person or a doctor. Luckily today, we have a little helper that is going to be showing you what the poses look like in real life. This is my one of my favorite littles, my niece. Her name is Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Hello, Aunt Polina. Do you think that you could help us do some yoga today? Yes. Awesome. Thank you for helping us do this today. Okay, the first one that we're going to do is called the child's pose. You sit on your heels with your knees together or spread apart. You rest your forehead on the ground. Place arms by your side or stretch them out in front of you, whichever is more comfortable. Are you ready? Yes. Great job. Okay, we're going to go into the second pose. It's called the tree pose. You can start from the mountain pose, if you know what that is. You can place your hands together at your heart, bend one of your legs, and place the bottom of your foot on the inside of the upper thigh or calf on your opposite leg. You can also experiment with raising your arms up over your head in the pose if you want to. Then repeat with the other leg. But if you, Tommy, could just show us what it looks like, that would be great. Awesome job, kiddo. Okay, the next one we're going to do is the frog pose. Stand with your legs about hip width apart and turn your toes slightly out. Bend your knees and lower your bottom towards the ground. Place your hands together at your heart and rest your elbows against the inside of your knees. You can also place your hands on the floor in front of you and lift your heels off the ground. Just whatever you feel like. What a great job. I have one more, but I don't think I sent it to you. It's called the mountain pose. You stand tall with your feet hip width apart. Face your feet forward and extend your arms out alongside your body with your palms facing out. Feel your spine and neck long, feet grounded into the earth, and your heart extending forward. Thanks for letting me sneak that last one in there, and thank you so much for your help. You did fabulously. You're welcome. Okay, you guys. You can use these poses whenever you need grounding and security. Other than that, that's all I have for you for this video. I will talk to you next time.